We recently shipped a bunch of great new UI enhancements to Daxter. I'm Josh, a product designer on the Daxter Labs team, and in this video, I want to walk through some of the new features we shipped in the 1.6 release. First up is dark mode. We've heard your feedback that the UI can feel a bit blinding when working late at night, and we want Daxter to feel right at home alongside your other developer tools in dark mode. With the 1.6 release, we reskinned the entire UI and launched two beautiful new themes, a light mode and a dark mode. By default, Daxter will respect your system's theme setting, but you can always override this in your user settings and force it into light or dark mode all the time. We hope you love the new themes as much as we do, and we hope that they make Daxter feel a bit more comfortable and friendly to use even late at night. Up next are some changes to the Asset Lineage UI. The global lineage graph is one of the most powerful interfaces in Daxter today. It provides the single shared observability layer across teams and technical boundaries but it can quickly descend into chaos in large data platforms. In Dagster 1.6, we've brought a bunch of usability improvements to help you navigate, explore, and operate the global lineage graph. Let's take a look at each of them. The first one I wanna talk about are some improvements we've made to asset groups. Asset groups are a great way to organize your assets around different technology or team boundaries. And the lineage views now default to a graph of these groups. The global graph now renders nearly instantly, even with thousands of assets in your deployment. There's no longer a need to filter down the global graph to render the lineage. You can simply click to expand or collapse groups to reshape the graph to your needs. We've also provided some helpful shortcuts to quickly expand all or collapse all. Down in the bottom right, you can toggle the expand all or collapse all button, or just hit the option E keyboard shortcut to do this anywhere within the canvas. In an upcoming release, group nodes will also show the aggregated asset statuses. This gives you an amazing bird's eye view of the state of your entire data platform that's easy to explore and quick to render. Next, I wanna talk about the new lineage sidebar. Sometimes even group graphs are just too big to intuitively fit into view. When this happens, you end up needing to pan and zoom around the graph just to track down an issue or find an asset you care about. It can be really tedious. The new lineage sidebar provides an index of all of your assets, even if they aren't in view or if they're buried within an asset group. You can use the sidebar to navigate and control the graph. So selecting an asset in the sidebar selects it in the graph too. Clicking on a group in the sidebar will center that group in the graph. And you can hold down the shift key to select a collection of assets. And you can even combine selections across the graph and the sidebar to build more complex groupings. Finally, you can use this new jump to field to quickly find any asset within the graph, even if it's buried deep within a collapsed group. Next, I wanna talk about some new quick actions we've added to the graph. One thing that sets Dagster's lineage views apart from other data cataloging tools is that you can rematerialize or backfill data sets right from the graph. In 1.6, we've added a few new ways to make this interaction even easier. Just right click on any asset to open its new quick actions menu. From there, I can materialize it. Now that I've rematerialized this asset, Dagster understands that its downstream assets are now out of date and it flags this for me. We can quickly reconcile these out of date assets by right clicking on any group. From here, I can choose to rematerialize the entire group of assets or just target the ones that have changed. In this case, I'll just target the ones that have changed. Great, my assets are all up to date. I can also use the new right-click menu to quickly reshape or filter the graph. Let's say I just wanna see which assets are downstream of a failed one. Now I can right-click on any asset and click show downstream. This will write a filter query to clear away any assets that don't matter to me. I can always edit or expand the query up at the top. And there's some helpful query hints embedded right within the filter bar too. Sometimes I also just want to filter to a single group. I can do that really quickly with this new filter to this group quick action. This will write another filter and clear away any noisy assets that lets me focus just on the group that I care about. I can also combine this with any other filters to build more complex lineage graphs. Finally, I want to talk about some improvements to compute kind tags. These tags are a great way to help organize your assets and visually distinguish different types of assets from each other. You can add compute kind tags to any asset by passing a compute kind argument to your asset decorator just like this. 
With Dexter 1.6, you can now filter by compute contact and build rich lineage views that target specific technologies, for example, dbt, pandas, or sling. You can provide any string as a compute kind, and we support a growing list of branded compute kind tags as well. In the latest release, we've added branded icons for a bunch of new technologies like DLT, PyTorch Lightning, XGBoost, and Ray. So that's what's new in the Asset Lineage UI. Finally, I want to talk about some more improvements we've made to the sensor UI. Sensors allow you to instigate runs based on some external state change. For example, you might want to launch a run whenever a new file appears in an S3 bucket. In 1.6, we've made it much easier to identify and debug issues with sensor evaluations. The sensor timeline view has been redesigned to show the result and duration of each evaluation. You can click into any of the evaluation nodes in the timeline to dig into the details a little bit more. This includes things like the evaluation result and duration, the number of runs that may have been launched, a skip reason if one was provided, or any sensor logs that you may have provided as well. That's all for now. This has been just a quick overview of some of the new features we shipped in Dexter 1.6. I can't wait for you to try them out, and you can find a link to the full 1.6 release notes in the description below. We'd love to hear what you think of these new features, and I'll see you next time.